So I'm going to explain and demonstrate a quick hack that I've put together that's based on some wonderful work created by the good people at Adafruit. So what is it they've done? Well, they've made a way for users of CircuitPython to be able to program Choose Your Own Adventures um, to run on their Pi Portal line of boards. If you remember, in the 1980s, Choose Your Own Adventure game books were very, very popular. I know I used to read them. Um, and how do they do this? Well, in a technical sense, uh, they borrow concepts from another throwback to the 1980s called Hypercard. We can see a screenshot of Hypercard here on the Adafruit website. And how does it work? Well, uh, Hypercard applications are a stack of cards where each card represents a particular screen in the application. And each card also has a set of buttons uh, which the user clicks to transition to all the other cards or screens in the application. And so here we have the, um, the card itself with whatever content is there. And at the bottom, we've got the buttons that takes you to card five, for example. And so Adafruit's uh, stroke of genius was to realize that actually if every page in the Choose Your Own Adventure book was a card and thus a screen in the application and each choice in the Choose Your Own Adventure game was a button on each of those cards, then what you can start to do is build up a sort of a network of how do each of these different states transition into each other until at the very end you end up with a game that tells you um, which cards you need and which buttons you need to transition to all the other cards in the game, thus allowing you to play the game. How do they do this? Well, they use uh, a very simple JSON-based specification. Um, this is a list of JSON objects, uh, and each JSON object represents a card in the, in the stack. Uh, each card has a unique ID. Uh, and other attributes such as a background image, in this case it's a kind of a, a, a grayscale-y type uh, um, bitmap, um, some text to display to the user, text about what's happening in the game, and importantly at the bottom here uh, we see that there's a button that will have continue written on it, and when you click that button it will take you to the card or the screen with the ID in. And the ID uh, in is actually defined by this card. Okay, and it represents a peaceful, happy inn with plentiful drink. Okay, interestingly, this has some attributes we've not seen yet. Uh, for example, a WAV file, so we can get it to play sounds for us. And another difference is that this has two buttons. Okay, one for staying in the pub and the other one for going outside. And it tells us, of course, uh, where each of these buttons should take you. And by using this JSON specification, players on CircuitPython based boards are able to play simple choose your own adventure games. Now, my idea was to take this specification and write a desktop version of this so it would run on regular computers. So that's what I've done. And I'd like to show you uh, PYOA or Pick Your Own Adventure or Pi Your Own Adventure. Uh, I'm using the naming conventions that Adafruit started with. I'm not sure I'll stick with those. Um, as you'll see later, uh, I've kind of expanded on this idea and the name might not quite fit. But essentially, you just need three lines. Um, create the app, load the JSON file we've just seen, and then run it. What does it look like? Well, ah, it's off. Uh, on my other monitor, so let me just move it over to this monitor. Um, so we've got the greyish background image. Uh, welcome adventurer, your adventurer begins, as so many do, in the old inn. Um, and the continue button should take us to the inn. Huh. Let me turn down the volume a bit here. So the wave file is playing, we've got the new text, and we've got some choices now with two buttons. What do I want to do? I want to go outside. Okay. I'm by a cave, so I think I want to explore the cave. I'm in the dark, narrow tunnel. I'm in a small room. There are side tunnels. Let's go into the side tunnel. There's a pile of treasure, etc., etc. Okay, so with this application and this JSON specification, what we're able to do is make very, very simple choose your adventure games. 
and it struck me that this beautiful simplicity might be a wonderful way of introducing beginner programmers to making applications that require a graphical user interface. Now just think for a moment, as a beginner programmer often you are stymied into only being able to create applications that print out text or allow users to type in text and in fact most applications that people use today are graphical user interface driven applications which have buttons and images and sounds and all the other kind of good stuff and so how do we let beginner programmers access these capabilities and this is where I think HyperCard uh, is really rather a wonderful way of going about this. So the first thing I decided was, well, if I build up from the solid foundations that Adafruit have given us, um, what do users need to be able to do? Well, they need to gather user input. And so I expanded things a little bit and I created some inputs for cards in my card app. Now, I'm not using JSON here. I'm, I, you still could use JSON, uh, but I've basically created a list of uh, card objects here. And each card object is like the JSON object in that it has particular attributes. Uh, there's, the, there's the unique ID there highlighted. Uh, in this case, what I'm doing is saying that each card has a form element on it. And in this case, uh, it's a text box. OK, um, and there are actually five different types of form element that you can use to gather user input. Um, there's the text box, there's the text area, there's the multiple choice um, uh, selector, then there's the single choice selector, and then there's a slider for numeric data uh, where you can give it a minimum, a maximum, and a step. And of course, if you have choices, you can give it options as well, uh, like here. Okay, what do they look like? Well, let me show you. Uh, this is a single line text box. Here's the multi-line one. Uh, a multiple choice selection, so I can choose any number of these or toggle them off again. That's perhaps what I want for my breakfast. Single choice selection is only choosing one of each of these uh, or toggling off again. And finally, the slider with a minimum and a maximum with a movement via amount of step as well. Okay, so if we're able to gather user input, we need to be able to in some way process this input. And we also need a way of being able to store application state so we can remember things in the application, perhaps what the user has inputted. And the way we do that is with very simple functions. Instead of having a target that's a string, we give the target as a function. And these functions, and it doesn't really matter what they're called, um, I'm just using go to something or other uh, because it's obvious what they mean, uh, but these functions always take two arguments. They take a data store argument, which is uh, a way of storing application state and retrieving application state, and it's simply a Python dictionary, nice and simple. And the um, form argument is whatever the value of the form input is in the immediately previous card. So the card you're transitioning from, okay? If there was no form element, this returns, uh, this is uh, set as none. Importantly, we can do a whole bunch of business logic things here, and then we return a string identifying the next card we need to transition to. So I have a whole bunch of these functions, very simple functions to transition between cards. And uh, what we can see here is that with the buttons taking me to the seaside, I use the go to seaside function. Go to the mountains is the go to the mountains function. OK, um, and then I just uh, run the application as per normal, nice and simple. Um, this is a silly, silly uh, old postcard application with some multimedia in it, but essentially, where would you like to go for your holiday? Here's some state being uh, surfaced here. We haven't finished any, we haven't visited any places yet. Let's go to the seaside. Now we can see you have visited the seaside. So the logic in the transitions has updated the um, data store um, and um, 
we're able to use some simple templating, which I'll talk about in a moment, um, to make sure that Seaside appears here. Let's go to the mountains. It's enough of that. Um, and uh, finally, the city. Notice how the state is updated again. enough of that silliness okay so um given all these features we're able to create some quite interesting applications for example the classic hello world type application for GUI developers uh, is a temperature converter and uh, I'm using these very simple functions you know they're getting the data store and the form values um, and I'm doing some program logic here uh, where I am attempting to take the value from the form and turn it into uh, Celsius and storing that in uh, against the key called results. And then I'm saying that you need to transition to the result card. And if there's a problem, go to the error card. The same for Fahrenheit here. And then each of the cards defined here, uh, the uh, form input, uh, the get value uh, card, uh, uses a text box to get the number from the user. And then uh, if you click on the convert to Celsius button, we get uh, to call the two underscore C function and so on. Uh, if there's an error, uh, we get taken to this card. Uh, notice that it auto advances after three seconds back to the get value um, uh, card. And then the result card is just a label with some text. Now, the important thing for you to remember is that the text uh, contains the Python templating kind of language, okay? And what it will do is insert the value of whatever is stored against the key result in the um, uh, data store um, in this string, okay? It's going to insert that uh, using the Python templating, standard Python templating formatting. Um, and uh, we should get a very simple temperature converter. Okay, oh, once again, it's in the wrong monitor. So let's go and say, I want to know what 36 uh, degrees uh, Celsius is in Fahrenheit. It's 96.8, okay. Um, and uh, what's that in Celsius? Uh, it's some <laughs> floating point, don't you just love it? Um, let's put something um, problematic in here. We can't convert 36 hello into Fahrenheit. So we get sent to the error page, which after three seconds auto transitions back to the uh, user entry form, okay? So, a nice and simple temperature converter. This is early days. The actual module that does all of this stuff is only about 350 lines of Python code. I need to add tests, comments, documentation, uh, tutorials. I need to upload it to PyPI so people can pip install it and start using it and commenting on it. I need to put it on GitHub as well so folks can see the code. This is very much early days and it's something I've kind of hacked together in the last couple of days. Okay. Um, importantly, the user interface framework that I'm using underneath all of this is called Kivi. Now, Kivi runs on a wide range of platforms, which is very useful if you're a beginner programmer because you want to be able to run your software and show it to you or your friends all over the place, such as Windows, OS X, Linux, Android, and iOS as well. It's kind of fun that this stuff should, if we do the Kivi stuff right, uh, work on the mobile devices um, that users, beginners might have. So it's early days built on the solid foundations that Adafruit created. And let's see where this might go. Thanks a lot for listening.